Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Dave from Rolling Hills Farm. Uh, I'm actually out cutting a little bit of second crop today, starting in this grass field that's really thin, uh, but I think it'll be good. Uh, here, I'm getting back into the row. I think it'll be good uh, square bales, grass square bales. Uh, so you can see. I think we're going to have some pretty nice value uh, of what will be nice second crop hay. You could make a sound argument that uh, cutting this hay probably isn't even worth the fuel, uh, but we need a few more square bales uh, for the horse and for any sick animals, pen cows, we might have over the course of the year. So. You know, even if we only get 45 or 50 square bales off this, that's 45 or 50 square bales we didn't have. So it's early morning and there's quite a bit of dew on and so uh, uh, Dawn's out tedding the alfalfa here uh, just to mix it up a little bit to enhance the drying. You can't really even see that any drying has happened yet. Well, it's sunny with a nice breeze today, a beautiful drying day. Yesterday actually was cloudy, so we uh, I just let the hay sit. Uh, this late in the year, sometimes you have to do that. So I thought it might be a good idea, we have such a small amount of hay today, to uh, get around to doing my review of the New Holland Pro Cart Rake. Uh, we've had it for two seasons now, and today will be uh, the thinnest hay we've tested it out on uh, last year, if you remember, was the hay was first and second crop both were very heavy. So we got a chance to uh, uh, test this uh, unit out on really heavy windrows. This year has been just the opposite, and especially now. So one of the things I really like about this rake is how easy it is to adjust. And you can see right now, because uh, I, I have it set narrow, it's a very tight windrow here. Um, I've got it set on the narrow setting because we were using the square baler with it. So all you have to do is pull this pin and then just kind of give it a push. And it's really that simple. Now the other adjustment is the arm spacing. And uh, for full width, there's four holes here, and you can see I've got it set on the third one. So I can go one hole further, and you have to raise the arms up for that setting, so it's a little more difficult. And then when you've got them up, move this turnbuckle. And then when you've got it to the fourth hole, put that um, uh, pin back in. You can run it at a high gear and a low engine speed, and you can get around the field as fast as uh, the field will allow based on bumps and these spring mounted individual spring mounted wheels will go up over lumps and things and keep really good ground contact. Uh, it leaves nothing like our old bar rakes always left a lot of hay on the field especially thin hay second crop third crop it was frustrating that you cut a bunch of stuff and there it was on the end of the field. And these wheel rakes, well, they don't leave anything. The beams are pretty heavy, square too. Uh, the axles are beefier than a lot of the wheel rakes we looked at, uh, as is the frame. Uh, bigger tires, 
you know, more uh, commercial looking farm tires. This is a more expensive rake and probably because you're paying for uh, these features that we find are indispensable. And it's a strong, durable piece of equipment. Another must have feature, and this is an option, is to add the 11th wheel. This is a 10 wheel rake and the 11th wheel because what happens is, and you can see it when you're looking from right here, if you did not have this wheel here, you'd be missing uh, parts of the windrow. As you go over, it wouldn't get raked. We've also got shutoffs here. So when we're going down the road, we'll flick these valves when we've got it up. And then the uh, arms and the, the center wheel stay locked in the up position. Uh, so going down the road, you don't uh, have them come down and damage anything. So while my vote is uh, a definite yes uh, for uh, this wheel rake, um, it's, it will not be our only rake going forward. So what we've noticed is it doesn't work in straw. Uh, the problem we've discovered in straw is when you drag a, a wheel on the ground, you kick up all kinds of green grass and you end up with uh, wet uh, straw bales, especially if you're doing square bales that heat up. So when it comes to straw, we're still using our bar rakes. We run it on the three-point hitch of the tractor and we could raise and lower that three-point hitch and keep the teeth of the rake uh, grabbing just straw and not the grass that's on the ground underneath. In summary, uh, we definitely feel this is a great purchase. Uh, uh, certainly for a farm like ours using a New Holland mower, uh, baler, and uh, New Holland tractors. Uh, it's a great fit. Uh, I, I definitely would recommend anybody buying one of these. So, now it's time to go out and bale some second crop. Well, it's a little late, the sun is setting, but I think it's dry enough. No, this alfalfa is just too tough to do tonight. We've got a nice day tomorrow. I'm gonna let it sit in windrows and uh, we've got sun and heat tomorrow. We're gonna let it heat up and try again. It's just damp under here. And I don't know if the camera shows it, but this looks like it was cut yesterday, not four days ago. So, tomorrow's another day for second crop. Well, it took an extra day, but the hay is nice and dry now. So we're gonna get their home baler in and uh, pick up this last five acres of hay.
Well there, there's some real nice quality alfalfa round bales for uh, to wrap up our haying season. Uh, not a lot of volume here, but, but uh, uh, good enough volume for this year and uh, some real nice high quality second crop. Took us a couple of days longer to dry it than we wanted, but we're at the end of our season here. So uh, haying is done. We've got enough uh, to feed the animals for this winter, which is what matters. Let's hope uh, uh, the drought goes away and we have a much better year next year because I don't think we'll have any carryover bales uh, to help us next year. So it's on with all the other fall chores. Thanks for watching. We'll be back and talk to you then.